In this section, we're going to focus on geometric probability. So what we're looking at here is using the idea of geometric area to find the probability. So pretty simply stated, we're basically saying the probability of the shaded area or landing in the shaded area is equal to the area of the shaded region divided by the total area that we could fall into. Let's look at a few examples. If a parachutist jumps out of a plane, what is the probability that he will land on the emblem of the football field? Well, in this situation, we're given the dimensions of the football field, and we're given dimensions of the emblem. And the question is, what's the probability that when he falls onto the stadium or jumps onto the stadium, that he'll fall in that area? Now, according to our formula, we need the area of the shaded region, and we need the area of the total region. So the first thing I decided to do is find the area of my emblem. In this case, I took my 80, which is most likely feet, multiplied it by my 80, and got 6,400 feet squared. Then I found the area of the entire football field, and that ends up being about... 57,600 feet squared. So now I have the area of the two. How do I find the probability of landing in this region? Just simply divide the two. When you divide the two, you realize there's a 1 in 9 chance that if he were to jump out of a plane, he will land inside an emblem. If you want to make it a decimal, and I probably should only have two here. Let's look at another example. Another example of geometric distribution is what if all of our sections are equal? So in this case we have a carnival wheel broken into 30 numbers each have the exact same area. Half the numbers are black half the numbers are red. Well if I come over here and I look at my probabilities the probability that I'm going to get an odd number is just simply half of the spots out of the total, so 15 out of 30. Probably going to end up with a number from 1 to 10, since there's 10 numbers, it's 10 out of 30, one third. Probability of black is also one half. And the probability of getting the number 1, or any individual number, would be 1 out of 30. And this is if they're all the exact same area. So now it's a chance for you to try. What's the probability that I would land inside that red region if we're dealing with a 6 by 6 square and a 20 by 10 rectangle? You may want to pause the video now. Well, the first thing I would do in a situation like this is I'd have to find the area of all the pieces. I find the area of the square, my 36 feet squared. I find the area of my rectangle, my 200 feet squared. And I just simply do the division. End up with 9 fiftieths or 0.18. Now notice there's no label on your final answer, your probability, because your two labels cancel each other out. So the probability that I will land inside that red region is 0.18. Let's look at one final example, in this case a dartboard. There's four different areas that I could end up in. I could end up in this white area if I throw a dart, this yellow area, the blue area, or right inside this red area here in the bullseye. Well, the way this breaks down, from one side to the other, we're talking about a 36 by 36 dartboard. This distance here is 6 inches. This distance here is 6 inches. And the diameter of this entire thing is 6 inches. You keep those ideas in the back of your head as you go ahead and you find the area of these pieces. Well, the question is, what are you going to do? Again, I would suggest pausing the video. In the next few slides, we're going to actually go through the answer to this. So if you want to make an attempt, go ahead and pause the video. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to find the area of the entire thing. And that's simply 36 by 36. Next, we have to find the area. But this isn't quite as simple as it sounds. The first thing you're going to want to do is start all the way on the inside, and you're going to want to use that red region. Well, the red has a diameter of 6, so it has to have a radius of 3. I find the area of the red, 
divided by the total, the 1,296, and I end up with about 3 over 130. We just approximated this. Next, I have to find the area of that blue region, but I have to remember that this red has already been accounted for. So I find the area of the overall circle that incorporates blue and red, and then I have to subtract off the piece the 28.26 that I've already accounted for. Once I do that, I find the area of just the blue region and do my simple division again. And I end up with about 9 out of 52. And finally, to find the area of the yellow region, first thing I do is I find the area of the yellow. Remember, that will include the blue and the red. Well, I find the area here of the blue circle, but this includes the red circle also, because we're not going to subtract that out, because we want to take the entire blue and red away. Once we subtract this, this gives us the area of just the yellow region. I do the same idea I've done before. Again, we're just approximating here, and we're ending up with the probability of landing in the yellow region is about 9 out of 26. Now we have a probability distribution. We know the probability of landing in the red region, the blue region, the yellow region, and we can simply find the area of landing in the white region. If we knew how many points each one of these was worth, then we'd be able to figure out the probability of a particular player scoring a certain amount of points based on the number of darts they get to throw. We're going to use this idea to talk about mathematical expectation, and we're also going to use this idea to probably develop some games as we go through the year.